Welcome back. This is Noah Kunin, Senior Political Correspondent for The Uptake. You're watching Recapital, our recap of what's going on at the Minnesota Capitol. It was an incredibly busy day at the Capitol, so be sure you're subscribed to our Twitter account so you can stay up to date. It's only going to get busier. First up is Representative Rukavina's concerns over the State Department of Natural Resources taking over more land as a result of the constitutional amendment dedicating funds for wildlife protection. You know, hey, coming from the Soviet Republic of the Iron Range, I don't mind public ownership, <laughs> but we're the third largest, largest owner right now of land in the United States of America behind the federal government and the state of Alaska. How are you going to do the job of carrying out this $69 million of outdoor heritage money when you can't do what you're supposed to do now. That's my only point. Mr. Chair, Representative Very Rubina, the road easement that you're trying to solve through legislation uh, is a negotiation that's been ongoing that we're trying to, to benefit the, the kids, the school trust, at the benefit of that landowner. That road would be rebuilt oh, oh, to a better Mr. Chair, I'm left. sorry, I so can't. Bob, can I go can't take forth on this. Bob, Bob, long, well, Bob you've got 10 miles of shoreline that's worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and you're spending seven years to raise seven grand? Oh, come on. Uh, we're going to have. not even. It's Rep embarrassing that you would sit there and say this stuff. Uh, Representative Rukavina, we're going to have to uh, <laughs> recess have for to the floor session. Out. Things didn't exactly cool down once on the House floor. There was an impassioned debate over a set of significant reforms on state health care payments proposed by Republican Representative Gottwald. The main change would move Minnesota to a pay-as-you-go system for deductibles. While some DFLers expressed support for the bill, many said they weren't quite ready to vote green. So I think we have to continue to push on the reforms that we began last year. We worked together on those last year. And I think we need to continue to explore this idea. And that's why I signed on to the amendment to put it into the Health and Human Services Omnibus Bill, because I support the further exploration of what I think could be some really good ideas. But it is not ready for prime time. It's not ready for passage. It's not a fully robust reform. And so, members, I would ask for your opposition to this amendment. Thank you. I, and I, I don't accept uh, members who uh, tell us that, boy, this is a great idea, but it's just not ready for prime time. Now is the time for action. Now is not the time for more diversion and distraction. This, this proposal that Representative Gottwald has brought forward is exactly what we should be doing. If you go back to the early 1990s when Minnesota Care was created, and you take a look at the graph and you watch what happened to spending, it's, that's where it starts. The idea was correct. We're trying to provide a program for those in Minnesota that need some safety net, that need some help. It's the wrong program. It doesn't provide for the, the things that it's supposed to provide. It's not sustainable runaway costs. Here's what Representative Gottwald is providing. He's providing a solution. Vote for the solution today so we don't have to cut. So you don't have to leave here on May 19th and tell everybody back at home, oh gosh, we had to cut, cut, cut because the governor wouldn't raise, raise, raise. He wouldn't raise your taxes. While the measure eventually failed by only 12 votes, Representative Gottwald is hopeful some aspects of the proposal work their way into the final omnibus Health and Human Services Bill, which is being sent to conference committee. Stay tuned to the uptake for continuing live coverage of the Minnesota Capitol.